Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I literally have just finished writing down the news for you in my little notebook, handwritten notes. And I was about to leave the place and then the rain has started. So I said, you know what, let's, do, let's just record this video from inside. So the sound will be good. No rain, no wind, everyone is happy. I have uh, what I have for you today. Uh, we will end this video with the update about Polish farmers and how the situation currently looks like. Uh, I will start with the article from TASS and some words from the one and only Sergei Lavrov. But the main part of this video, about 90% of this video, will be quite lengthy article that I would like to read to you. Because it provides a lot of information, things that I didn't know about, uh, more in details. And I think you will appreciate this, um, this info, as I actually do, since Zelensky, just a few days ago, has signed important laws into existence. And those laws, those laws they are uh, about recruitment to fight in Ukraine, mobilization. That's right. So let's start with Sergei Lavrov, who just said this yesterday, actually, I'm sorry, today on the 4th of April. By the way, I almost forgot, tomorrow, Friday, the 5th of April at 4 p.m. New York City time, sorry, 4 p.m. Warsaw time, uh, 10 a.m. New York City time. I have a live stream scheduled with Professor Michael Hudson. I hope you can join us. The link is already in the um, community page or if you go under live category, you can see the live stream is already scheduled. And you can also see it on my locals as well. By the way, please, please, please join me on locals, guys. If you choose to support me, I appreciate but if you choose not to, you, you can just join. Please do it. So let's start with Sergei Lavrov. West wants all NATO members to assist Kiev as long as it keeps fighting Russia. Now they want to turn voluntary military aid to Ukraine into mandatory military aid under NATO auspices to force all NATO members to sign up for the obligatory provision of funds and weapons to the Kiev regime through heavy-handed disciplinary measures, just so that it can continue to fight Russia. So that's the top diplomat uh, Sergei Lavrov said at the meeting with foreign ambassadors on a potential settlement in Ukraine. And some numbers here. Since the beginning of the special military operation in Ukraine, foreign countries and international organizations have provided Kiev with assistance to totaling more than $150.8 billion, almost one third, which is uh, $48.5 billion, went to Ukrainian military needs. According to TASS, Calculations based on an official statement by the authorities of donor countries and media data. $150.8 billion. How many mansions, guys? How many boats at the Monaco coast? What do you think? You know, you have so much money, for sure you're going to have a property in Monaco because that's the tax haven, as we know. And then you can just dock your boat and come down with your coffee in the morning and sail away, you know? Love boats, right? Thus, the total amount of Western aid to Ukraine since the beginning of the special military operation has exceeded its budget for 2022. And that is $55.5 billion by 2.7 times. And military aid to Kiev alone in already equal to, is already equal to 94.4% of Russia's defense spending last year, which is 51.1 billion. Russian President Vladimir Putin 
said earlier that today the military potential and capabilities of almost all major NATO countries are being actively used against Russia. Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu emphasized that Moscow was fighting not so much with the Ukrainian military as with the collective West. So this article is from TASS, as always the link you find down below in the description box. And now let me take you to the article from Polish website that's called Oko Press. Oko in Polish means I, an I. Um, it's a long article. I written down most of it because I found it very informative and I hope you stay with me as I will do my best to read it in my broken English. However, I, I'm sure most of you will understand. It's about the mobilization in Ukraine and what Zelensky has just signed. So lowering the mobilization age from 27 to 25 years and an e-recruit profile. So Zelensky just signed this important uh, document, this important laws. The difficult situation on the front line is forcing the government to mobilize more Ukrainian citizens. In addition to lowering the age, the status of military limited capability was abolished and mandatory registration and mandatory sorry, registration of the electronic recruit profile was introduced. On April 2nd, so two days ago, this year 2024, the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, signed several laws of mobilization. Due to severe losses and fatigue, the Ukrainian army needs to be supplemented with new soldiers. You know, I will give you my side comments, as I always do. <sighs> new soldiers. Um, just wonder how many of those new soldiers will not come from Ukraine. One more time, I want to remind you that in Poland, the age group starts from 18 years old. Let's continue with this article. Western partners have also suggested that the average age of soldiers in the Ukrainian military is 40 years old. The Ukrainian army has about, that's what the article says, about 880,000 people. But that doesn't mean everyone is fighting on the front lines. I mean, I don't believe that's the number, but who knows? The experts know, not me. Recall that in December 2023, Zelensky said that the commander-in-chief chief staff um, estimates Ukraine's mobilization needs to at 500,000 people, so half a million people. The then commander of the armed forces of Ukraine, General Valery Zaluzhny, explained that this half a million does not mean that so many soldiers will be mobilized overnight. This is to be done in stages. Mobilization remains a difficult topic for the Ukrainian government. It's a very sensitive issue when you have to take responsibility for the fact that younger people have to go to the front lines. It's very complicated. It's very difficult. Well, my opinion here, I don't think it's really that complicated and difficult. It's just sign the peace agreement and respect this peace agreement instead of dragging everyone into this difficult situation. My comment. But those words that it's very complicated and it's very difficult, difficult were said by Oleksiy Danilov, who was then secretary of the National Defense Council. And he said it in autumn of 2023. And he was dismissed on March 26, 2024, so not long time ago. On December 25th, 2023, so Christmas time, the Ukrainian government announced a draft law on improving certain issues of mobilization, military registra registration and military service, which sparked loud discussion in Ukrainian society and was rejected. I think actually I recorded a video about this in that time. On January 11, 2024, the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, Rustem Umerov, 
if I mispronounce apologies, announced that his ministry had prepared a new version of the bill taking into account the, the comments. According to some experts, it contains provisions that violate the rights of citizens and create corruption loopholes. Dmitro Lubinets, the Vierkovna Rada of Ukraine's representative for human rights. Wow, that's an interesting position, right, guys? Sorry, I stopped the reading. Representative for human rights. Vierkovna Rada of Ukraine. That is a loaded position. Anyway, Dmitro Lubinets also initially pointed to a number of controversial provisions in the second draft of the mobilization law. However, he called on MP to support it, adding, MPs to support it, adding that MEPs should take his comments into account for the second reading. On February this year, February 7th this year, 2024, the Vierkovna Rada adopted the draft law on mobilization in the first reading. However, MPs table, table, tabled more than 4,000 amendments for second reading. Oh my goodness. Now, let's read about Ukrainian public sentiment in regards to this new law. According to a survey conducted by the Institute of Social and Political Psychology of the National Academy of Pedagogical Services of Ukraine in cooperation with the Association of Political Psychologists of Ukraine, presented in the Interfax Ukraine Ag Agency on Monday, this Monday, April 2024. So the f it was 1st of April, right? I think, no, anyway. Society is very divided on this issue. And here I will give you some numbers and something that will be probably the title of this video. More than half of the respondents, which is 53.9%, so almost 54% of Ukrainians, agree with this statement. Here is the statement. Those who evade mobilization can be understood. No one wants to die. More than half of the population of Ukraine that still remains there, I believe, that's how they did the survey, says that no one wants to die and those who evade mobilization can be understood. Only 17.2% disagree with the statement and about 29% do not have a clear answer. I think they are afraid to answer, that's what I will say. At the same time, almost 43% of respondents are ashamed of men who are hiding from mobilization. The contradictory approach to, mobi to mobilization, which can manifest itself both at the level of public consciousne consciousness and in the minds of individual citizens, possesses a serious challenge to the military and political leadership of the state and will require the use of psychologically justified measures to ensure effective mobilization, the researchers say. So here I want to ask you everyone, my best audience in the world ever, and I mean it, what kind of justified psychological measures will be ensured to create this effective mobilization. Sounds kind of creepy, no? At the end of March 2024, the new commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Oleksandr Sirsky, said in an interview with the Ukraine Forum Agency that the need for mobilization is less than half a million soldiers. Quoting him here, after reviewing our internal resources and clarifying the combat composition of the armed forces, this number, 500,000, has been significantly reduced. We expect to have enough people capable of defending our homeland. We are talking not only about the, mo the mobilized, but also about the volunteers, Sersky said. He added, 
we have to take into account that humans are not robots. They are physically and mentally exhausted, especially in combat situations. I'm not sure, I think probably that's the case, that those who have uh, joined the military forces, many of those men are still, are still fighting. I remember when their wives were protesting or mothers were protesting to bring them home two years later. You remember that, guys, right? So now let's take a look at the law, the laws that President of Ukraine Zelensky signed into existence on April 2nd, 2024. The younger ones will go to fight. In Ukraine, men from 18 to 60 years of age are subjected to compulsory military service. Until now, those who are at least 27 years old could be mobilized. Younger ones could voluntarily join the ranks of the armed forces or be called up to the army if they had experience in military service. Here I want to ask you, because I really, it's hard for me to imagine someone who is, let's say, 18, 19 years old, what kind of experience this young man can have in the military service? I, I really sincerely would like to know. This is not being sarcastic, because what experience 18-year-old can have in this regard? On April 2nd, 2024, the president signed a law lowering the mobilization age from 27 to 25. The government submitted a bill number 9281 and the parliament adopted it back in May 2023. Since June, the document has been waiting for the president's signature and his office has not commented on the case. The act should help to regulate the issue of replenishing the mobilization personnel reserve. Oh, a provision for mobilization from the age of 25 is also included in the government's draft law on mobilization, which was mentioned above and which has not yet been passed. Zelensky also signed a law on the electronic regist register of persons subject to compulsory military service, and this is number 10062, on amendments to certain laws of Ukraine, on the improvement of the procedures for the processing and use of data Big brother, everyone, and state registered for the purpose of military registra registration and obtaining the status of a war veteran during martial law. There are a few more very important things here, so bear with me. The government's draft on mobilization also includes a provision for the mandatory registra registration of an electronic recruit profile through which summons to the army would be served in addition to personal services in paper form. So here is what information they require, phone numbers and email address, the results of medical examinations, participation of the citizens in hostilities, documents entitling a citizen of Ukraine to go abroad and return, driver's, driver's license, the right to own a gun and the knowledge of foreign language. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that all the countries who support this project will gladly share those informations. One more thing here that is really interesting to me, and I would like to understand this, and this will be the topic that I will definitely bring in my next conversations with my guest, storing data in the servers of NATO countries. On the website of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine, we read that the signing of the Act Number 10062 allows for the creation of an application for Soldiers Army Plus, which should uh, enable, for example, the submission of electronic reports. Ukraine will be able to host its IT systems in the clouds of NATO member states. This will strengthen cyber defensive and improve data sharing with partners. 
This, I have absolutely no idea what is this, but this already sounds to me like no bueno. I know many of you understand this, so please put in the comments down below, what does this really mean? It just doesn't feel right, it doesn't sound right to me. The Minister of Defense will be able to independently determine which international information security standards to apply to military systems, the Ministry said. Another important change is the abolition of the limited capacity status. According to the bill number 10313, there will be only two statuses, fit and unfit, for the military service. Men who have limited capacity status should undergo a medical examination again within nine months. Doctors can indicate what limitations a person has in functioning. This will make it uh, easier for military units to choose the zone in which a person can be involved in the military, taking into account his or hers health status. So guys, let me see. Oh, last but not least. I read you the most of, most of this article, the big part of it. The law provides for the payment of 15 million uh, Ukrainian hryvnas to the soldier's family in the event of death. So I went and I checked at this moment how much it is in US dollars. 384,639.90 cents. $384,000 for the debt. That's the price. Which I'm sure, in most cases, the families will not receive this. So, very interesting. Uh, I'm sure a lot of these details you already knew, but if you haven't, I'm glad that you stay with me. I would like to know your thoughts on this. And now let me give you a quick update about the situation with Polish farmers and very good comment of the day, which I appreciate immensely. So Tusk, our new slash old prime minister, didn't show up to the meeting. Some of those protesters left the building. Some are still there. Uh, they blocked the entrance to the building that is the Minister of Agriculture in Warsaw. They will be also protesting uh, at the houses of those farmers who signed that agreement that is not being respected. But there is one comment that I believe this is a Polish viewer or um, a Polish person who lives abroad who left under my video yesterday. And I want to say, if you're watching me today, I very much appreciate this because you, had, you highlighted something that is a very important part of it. And... Uh, you reminded me of this, and I have to pay more attention to it. So let me read you this, guys. Comment is from Polski Patriot, Polski Patriota Emigrant. Polish Patriot Emigrant. I think you understand the name. Dear Anya, please don't be naive. These farmers, in quotation marks, who occupy the Ministry of Agriculture are a fal false flag. For example, such a farmer the name of the person here, Władysław uh, Serafin, who has lived in Warsaw for a long time and members of the NSZZ Solidarity of Individual Farmers, trade union, who have done nothing for Polish farmers for years. But their actions, they confirm the policy of the European Union towards Polish agriculture and the position of the anti-Polish authorities. This went on for at least a dozen years. They sat quietly or applied their consent for the anti-Polish and anti-agricultural anti policy of the European Union. Now, they pretend to be defended, defenders of Polish farmers. The Tusk government will therefore negotiate again with its agents. It is important that Polish farmers know what kind of representatives representatives they have please take this into account in your media activities thank you so much for your comment 
I appreciate it immensely and you are 100% right. I actually um, went yesterday into many videos from Poland here and many of farmers who were saying exactly those words what you were saying and I want to say that this is this is again showing us how multi-layered is all of this and how we are still being fooled so even those who are protesting actually are not really representing the farmers it's absolutely disgusting right so even being in this country, even trying my best to understand this, I still got fault and sidetracked with this whole operation. Oh, anyway, guys, that's all I have for you. I see you tomorrow. Uh, my live stream with Michael Hudson, Professor Michael Hudson, we will be talking about the economies, the money, the future, the history and the cycles and where we are heading with all of this. A uh, brilliant, brilliant mind. Very glad to connect with him for the third time already. I want to ask you one more time, please join me on Locals. Locals is a very safe platform and I would like you to be there with me just in case. If you choose to support me, thank you. You also have my mailing list, Instagram, um, PayPal and the fundraiser if you choose to participate in this. Thank you so much. All the links to the articles that I read to you, you find down below in the description box. And with this being said, please hit this like if you haven't uh, already. Subscribe as well and leave the comments down below. Like I say, I read them all and I will see you tomorrow in my live stream with Michael Hudson at 10 a.m. New York City time. Bye everyone, lots of love and remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. Bye guys.